we're now a little further out from the COVID crisis. You know, many in the community felt that the vaccines were rushed to the market. Have you seen electrical, biochemical responses to the vaccine? It didn't matter what the vaccine was, whether it was Moderna or Pfizer or j and there was still that electrical stress on the liver and a certain weakening of the thymus gland that sits behind your breast bone. I recently heard from your practice something that I'm super curious about, coffee enemas. If you boil some coffee, hopefully organic, Yep. and then you cool it, and then you insert it into an enema tube in your yep. rectum, yep. that coffee will cause the liver to release toxins. So it's legit? Yeah. So Actually, it was in the Merck manual in 1882. Wow. The drug companies were aware of that then. You know, as a culture, we've become acidic from lifestyle. Too much coffee, sugar, cigarettes, alcohol, soft drinks, and stress. And not enough fruits, vegetables, water, exercise, and fun. So the vegetables are the key thing. You know, people say, well, I drink alkaline water. Well, you know, it just doesn't do <laughs> Pancreas it. function is twofold. Uh, produces digestive enzymes, digest the protein, the starch, and the uh, fat in the food. Okay. But also makes insulin. And again, you're always treating the pancreas and the liver and the intestines as a, like a triangle. But the adrenals are the key. I find the adrenals are, they're like the car, uh, the gas pedal in your car. If, if you did nothing but treated the liver and the adrenals, you'd have a very happy patient. Yeah, because our society has an epidemic of anxiety and that is adrenals. Hi everyone, welcome to the Health Geniuses podcast. I'm your host, Alejo Mosin, and today I have the exceptional pleasure to introduce a remarkable figure in the world of medicine. Someone who's gapped the bridge between conventional medicine and energy medicine, a topic that I'm particularly fascinated by, and he's integrated many practices into a revolutionary approach into health and wellness. He is Dr. Michael Gallitzer, a trusted doctor to celebrities like Tony Robbins, Suzanne Summers, Vanessa Williams, and a man whose unique philosophy to health has been changing lives for over 35 years. And so, Dr. Gallitzer, welcome to the Health Geniuses podcast. Great to be here. So my first question for you is, can you describe the essence of your revolutionary approach to health, combining conventional and energy? Well, I can start with the history of my whole medical career, where I started as an emergency room doctor here in Los Angeles. Uh, did that for 15 years, board certified. Uh, I worked there, it was kind of the wild, wild west in those days. It was the 70s and 80s, and uh, uh, there were no trauma centers. Traumas went to the nearest hospital, 24-hour uh, shifts, sometimes 36-hour shifts. Uh, and it was, uh, it was a wild time. We used to say, where I worked in North Hollywood, the moon was always full. And so I uh, had amazing experiences as an ER doc. Uh, again, after 15 years, I was kind of burnt out looking for a change. Uh, came across a uh, ad in the Los Angeles County Medical Society Journal for a doctor to do nutrition and general practice. So I knew general practice and being an ER doc, I had no clue about nutrition. I figured, well, I'm single, the place is pretty close to where I live here in Westwood, uh, so I'll go learn nutrition. Went to seminars, listened to tapes at the time, got a nutritionist, started doing all these new blood tests, nobody got any better. One of the people that didn't get better was my best friend at the time. And in uh, running all these new tests, found out he had mercury filling toxicity from a mouthful of mercury fillings. Heard the expert talk, uh, asked the expert who I could refer my friend to locally as a uh, dentist to take the fillings out. And in those days, you do a food allergy test, just but a mercury or a, a metal allergy test to find out what metals were compatible with a patient's blood, just like you do a food allergy test. Right and came back and he came back and I referred my friend to this dentist and he came back from the dentist. He said, this dentist had this technology from Europe and he was, I held an electrode in my hand and he was poking my finger and he was measuring my skin resistance. And he had all these vials that said were good for my body and all the vials that had metals that were bad for my body and they exactly matched the blood test. I said, if you can do this without blood, I want to meet this guy met the guy and he said, look, these guys from Europe are t teaching this technology. Went and took the courses and been doing it ever since. Uh, so basically the uh, technology allows you to tap in to this electrical or energetic level. Um, 
Medicine is mostly physical, x-rays, CAT scans, biopsies, MRIs, looking at uh, structure of your body and right. chemi chemical blood tests. But there's a deeper electrical level or energetic level that correlates more to help people feel. So I see tons of people that said, I'm tired. I don't have the energy I used to have. I want right. more energy. Uh, I can't get through the day. Uh, blood tests are normal, x-rays are normal, and they've seen their doctors, and the doctors are a little clueless. Uh, they don't know what to do. But on the electrical level, we can figure all this out. Uh, and so just like a cardiologist does an electrocardiogram to look at the electrical heart, because the electrical impulse happens before the physical heartbeat, a neurologist does an EEG, look at the electrical brain, or an EMG for nerve muscle. Right. Uh, we look here at the electrical liver, kidneys, pancreas, adrenals, thyroid, your body's an orchestra. And these organs and glands are instruments in that orchestra. Some are sluggish and out of tune, which you cannot see on a blood test. You can see an inflamed liver, but not a sluggish liver. Right. Some are strong and in tune. And if we can get everything that's sluggish strong, the orchestra plays better music. And the other concept are toxins. In the ER, we were concerned about life-threatening toxins, overdoses, sleeping pills, carbon dioxide poisoning. This medicine says there's toxins in the air, water, food, uh, chemicals, heavy metals, pesticides, COVID viruses. Right. Some people think COVID vaccines, I tend to agree with that. Right. And uh, toxins accumulate in our bodies and our bodies don't work as well. So we always want to balance the orchestra and reduce the toxicity. And that's really the, uh, the overall plan of, of how we evaluate patients or talk to patients or explain to patients what exactly I do. So you're literally George Clooney in the ER and after 15 years, you feel this sort of drain in your system and you're like, I need to make a shift. Is that, is that the shift? Yeah, I was burnt out. Burnt out. Yeah. And then now, to, I mean, I do recall seeing a Korean doctor or a Korean Chinese medicine practitioner take like something in one hand and put an electrode in the other hand and do this arm test, right? Right, yeah, that's called applied kinesiology, AK, okay. which is muscle testing. Uh, the technology that I use, instead of uh, whatever would weaken a muscle, yeah. will change the skin resistance. It kind of works like a lie detector. If you lie in a lie detector uh, machine, the skin resistance changes, the needle squiggles. Here, if something does not resonate with your body, the skin resistance uh, will be affected and you can see that on a meter. I see, so the meter responds to the item that is toxic for your biochemistry. Either toxic or okay for you. Okay. Right? So if there's no change in the skin resistance, oh, brilliant. Uh, you know that thing is good for you. And if there is a change in the skin resistance, you know there's an issue. Now, I don't wanna get into a controversial discussion. Um, we, we're now a little further out from the COVID crisis that affected this world um, and everyone I think it was a very polarizing time obviously about vaccines um, and you know many in the community felt that the vaccines were rushed to the market have you seen electrical biochemical responses to the vaccine that imply that your body is you know rejecting it or it's toxic for some of your patients well, great question. A little bit of controversial question. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I see my patients every four weeks uh, and we do extensive testing on them. We do, uh, we'll talk about later, bioimpedance, heart rate variability. Uh, and uh, so in January of 21, people started coming in and go, I got my first shot. And, uh, and you can, the testing that I do can kind of fine tune about where there's electrical stress in the body. And I could see that there was stress in these people that was not there four weeks ago. And right. I thought I had done what I was going to do wow. successfully four weeks ago. And it was always involving the liver, the energetic liver. Wow. And we can talk about what that really means. And so it didn't matter what the vaccine was, uh, whether it was Moderna or Pfizer or J and J, there was still that electrical stress on the liver and a certain weakening of the thymus gland that sits behind your breastbone. Anyway, I, uh, I chose myself not to be vaccinated. Right. Uh, and I create formulas, uh, homeopathic and herbal formulas. And uh, I realized that I could create something that would protect these people. So I created a formula. It was difficult to uh, publicize it because of the fact that, yeah. uh, you know, 
I think would have just yeah. been taken off the market, or maybe I would have been taken off the market. Yeah. Uh, not quite sure what would have happened. Uh, but I would give it to anybody who had gotten the vaccine, because there are really reasons for people to get the vaccine. You couldn't work. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't travel. Yeah. You couldn't see your uh, dear one in assisted yeah. living or nursing homes. So there yeah. were people that really had to take the vaccine. And I said, look, if you're going to take the vaccine, take this formula, start it two days before, finish the bottle, you'll be fine. And uh, everybody was fine. Now, wow. the younger people don't seem to have that reaction to the, to the vaccine. I'm saying people like under 25 years old, uh, because I saw, you know, I saw hundreds of people, thousands of people probably. And I could say that they were able to clear it. Now, not everybody got sick. Some people, some people really got sick. Uh, yeah. Navy SEAL was in the ER uh, five hours after the vaccine. Wow. So, you know, there were effects. I don't know that you, you couldn't tell who was going to get it or who wasn't going to get it, but you know, uh, I was proud to know that uh, none of my patients, you know, wound up in a hospital who got COVID. Uh, I saw the Navy SEAL guy after, after the fact, but nobody really wound up in the hospital, whether it was the vaccine. Nobody really got sick, whether it was the vaccine or from COVID. And, you know, this is about three years worth of this stuff. Well, and as we discussed in the preamble before we started shooting, I actually am exposed to Chinese medicine since childhood. And so I have a bias towards it, um, having been um, indoctrinated early on. You mentioned bioimpedance. Can you give me a you know short explanation of what sure. you mean? So, sure. So basically, uh, we put two electrodes on your right hand mm -hmm. and two on your right foot, and basically we look at uh, capacitance, reactance, resistance, and you're able to tell body fat. Uh, how much nice. water is in your body, uh, your bone mineral content, whether or not you tend towards osteopenia, osteoporosis. Uh, but more importantly, there's a calculation called the phase angle. And the phase angle is a measure of regeneration. How well do you create new cells? We've got 50 trillion cells in our body. Right. We're losing cells every minute. We're making cells every minute. So the phase angle gives me an indication of how well you regenerate or create new cells. How are you measuring phase angle? It's a calculation. Based uh, on the bioimpedance. On the bioimpedance. Yeah, so it's baked into the test result. Electrical current goes in. Very tiny electrical tiny current. Tiny little. Yeah. Um, and you have a meter that is going to give you a response based on what's in my hand. Right. It'll, you have a readout of resistance and reactance. Okay. And then the phase angle is a calculation based upon those two readings, which, which technically says how well does your cell hold the end. Right. Oh, brilliant. Sort of like battery life. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I kind of get that being a Tesla minded individual. Um, I, so what about autophagy? So, and our ability to, to kill zombie cells, I understand that as we age, um, we start to lose this ability and zombie cells start to accumulate in our body. Does bioimpedance and phase angle give you any feedback on these zombie cells? No. Okay. No, but that's a great point. Uh, senescent cells or zombie cells. Yeah. Because well, we're, you know, cells live for different periods of time. Um, a red blood cell lives for 120 days. A skin cell lives for 30 days. A cell in your gut lives for five days. So at the end of a cell's life, it's supposed to self-destruct, called apoptosis. Uh, senescent cells refuse to self-destruct. Uh, they no longer can function as normal cells. They interfere with the cells around them. They cause inflammation. They actually prevent stem cells from regenerating the area. So senescent cells are a big deal. Wow. Uh, I found that mistletoe uh, liquid happens to get rid of senescent cells. And uh, again, that's one of those things I can test for, uh, right. not through the bioimpedance, but through some other technology. And that's a big deal because you can think that if senescent cells hang around long enough, they could transform cancer cells at some point. Autophagy is, is a little different. It's about the cell's ability to clear itself of toxins. And that's a big deal too. Yeah. So you're talking about how do cells get rid of toxins? Uh, they first get rid of toxins. They leave the cell and go into the lymphatic system. Lymph glands swell in the sore throat. Okay. Or there's lymph in your breast. There's lymph in your uh, 
abdomen, armpit, and pelvic area. And so the lymph system is very elaborate. These lymph vessels go up and empty under the collarbone into the large vessels, which eventually take it to the liver. The liver can either take it into the intestines and out the stool, or back into the blood, kidneys, and out the urine. So your lymph, liver, and kidney systems are the drainage systems that allow the autophagy coming out of the cells and those toxins, the toxins. to finally go out into the urine. Gotcha, brilliant. And so what we see with everybody is sluggish liver, liver, lymph, kidney systems. Now on a blood test, their kidney function is fine. Their liver tests are fine, but this energetic liver is sluggish. So the more that we can stimulate drainage through the liver, lymph, kidney systems, the more we can get the body to release, the cells to release the toxins and excrete them into the uh, urine in the stool. Super fascinating. I'm like, my mind is just exploding with ideas here because I recently had, as, as we mentioned earlier, I had my Randox report and some of the responses, some of the reds were in the liver functions. So when I'm hearing you talk about um, liver, it makes me super curious. But so I just wanted to connect a couple of dots if possible. So mistletoe with, is it restoring cells phase angle or is it with helping remove and if you have let's say a, mas a massage uh -huh. and all of a sudden your neck swells does that mean that the lymph system lymphatic system has been flooded with toxins that it can't quite expel yet right exactly right okay. your drainage is insufficient the massage caused the release of toxins on the cells right that's referred to as detox but you need to have drainage before detox so most okay. people don't get that they think it's one and the same. Yeah. And same process if you fast. Say so you fast, the cells will release the toxins, uh -huh. but the lymph, liver, kidney drainage systems may be too sluggish. It's right. like having a bowel movement on a toilet that won't flush. There's nowhere for this stuff right. to go. Two functions, release and then drainage. Yeah, but you want drainage first, then you can do the detoxification, you can do the colonics, you can do the uh, uh, castor oil packs, you can, do all, you can do the sauna, all those things would be much more, and lymphatic massage would be much more effective with the drain is clear. Okay, this so is- you gotta do drainage first, then detox. And how do you do that? Uh, well, what can people do? Yeah. Uh, for the liver, they can juice a lemon in the morning, every, every morning. Okay. They can uh, juice green vegetables, lots of veggies. For the kidneys, lots of good water, not distilled. Distilled water is dead water, doesn't have any minerals. You really should drink half of your weight in ounces per day in water. So if you weigh 150, you should drink 75 ounces a day in water. Wow. Uh, the lymph is no dairy because dairy inhibits the lymph system. Okay. Deep breathing and exercise. Rebounding, bouncing, trampoline, uh, all those things are great for, uh, for moving the lymph system. And again, you know, what I do is I put people on lymph, kidney, liver drainage formulas, herbal, uh, that I've created. So the combination of... Uh, uh, of what they can do at home and that what I can give them when I see them on the first visit assures that the drain is moving. Then you can move into the detox and do the things that people want. Saunas, saunas, uh, colonics, all those kind of things. Mentioning colonics, I recently heard from your practice something that I'm super curious about, coffee enemas. Can you tell me, I'm, I, I, it sounds amazing. Um, it, it was so interesting that I actually YouTubed uh, coffee enemas and I saw that there were people who were suffering anxiety, depression, they had like significant gut problems with whether it was parasites or etc. And these coffee enemas, they swore by them. Um, but you know, the critical mind in me has a little bit of like a question. It doesn't seem, um, it doesn't seem biologically natural to me to think like that. Um, however, I'm open to it. So I was wondering if you could elaborate a little on that. Sure, well there is a, uh, you know, I've referred a triangle of the liver, the pancreas, and the intestines. And every part of that triangle can energetically affect another part of the triangle. And so in terms of like cancer of the colon, it metastasized frequently to the liver. Uh, and so there's this liver colon connection. And so when you're, if you boil some coffee, hopefully organic, yep. and then you cool it, and then you insert it into an enema tube 
in your rectum, yep. that coffee will cause the liver to release toxins. Gotcha. Into, okay. the, into the intestines. As you know, a lot so of people- So drainage. Are, yeah. Well, actually- Release or drainage? Well, both, both. Both. It's actually releasing the toxins into the colon, and then ultimately it's coming out into the stool. Uh, the colonic works a sure. similar way without the coffee. Now, a lot of people who drink coffee have a bowel movement right after. Yeah. So there is that effect of increasing motility, but the coffee enema causes the liver to release the toxins. So it's legit? Yeah. So Actually, it was in the Merck Manual in 1882, the first Merck Manual. Really? talked all about coffee enemas. Wow. So, you know, these, you know, the drug companies were aware. For sure. So it's an accelerator. Yeah. Gotcha. So if you're like in a critical situation and you need sort of like a little octane boost in your tank to remove these toxins. Something that I'm fascinated about in your book, Outstanding Health by Dr. Michael Gallitzer, is your six keys to outstanding health. Is it possible that you could give us a quick rundown of what those six keys to essential outstanding health are? So the first one was cleanse, your, cleanse and fortify your mind. Yeah. Uh, second one was cleanse and fortify your body. Uh, the third one was optimize your nutrition. Uh, the fourth was uh, enhancing energy flow in your body. The fifth is using energy medicine to get healthier. And the sixth is, I think, hormonal happiness, balancing your hormones. So number one, you know, I want to know about their relationship. I want to know if they like their work. Uh, that I makes so know, much sense. I want to know about their vision. Do they have a vision for the next five years? Yeah. Uh, not this vision, but yeah. the vision. Uh, I want to know if, uh, are they happy? Yeah. Uh, uh, do they consider themselves to be healthy? Uh, is their support system good? <laughs> why do, why are you, like one of the very few doctors that do this. This is crazy. Yeah, well. It's just so common sense. Right, what, what's their purpose in life? Yeah. Uh, what excites them these days? Where's their passion? Yeah. Uh, what do they feel grateful for? You know, they can answer feeling grateful, but the question is, how often during the course of a day when someone is not asking them that, do they feel grateful for their life? Uh, but more importantly, I want to know about their gifts, because we each have unique gifts uh, that gives us the juice for life. That allows us to uh, do what we really want to do yeah. and also affect people all around us. And so I'm really curious about what is what are their unique gifts that they have uh, that allows that to happen. So that whole area would kind of fall under uh, cleanse and fortify your mind. Uh, cleanse and fortify your body. Uh, kind of, we kind of talked about that in terms of uh, toxins. Yeah. I mean, the air, the water, the food, heavy metals, mercury. When I first started this uh, practice, and the guy came in and he said, I'm hearing radio stations in my head. <laughs> and I thought, you know, another crazy from the ER, right? Yeah, just, he, yeah. he got to me. Yeah. Turns out he had a mouthful of mercury fillings. Mercury is not only toxic, but in the presence of saliva, causes electrical currents to be generated, which can be amplified by cell phones and computers. There were no cell phones there. And uh, we found it had mercury toxicity, we took the fillings out, the music stopped. Yeah. So uh, again, mercury double-barreled effect, and again, can contribute to insomnia and all sorts of things because of these currents. Everybody's on a cell phone, yeah. everybody's on a computer. And so these currents override the currents in the brain. And so again, so mercury, pesticides, uh, gluten, gluten is an issue in terms awesome. of toxins. I don't think it's the gluten as much as the combo of gluten and the GMO. Because the people that have gluten issues, they go to Italy, they have pasta, they're fine. Right. There's no GMO there. Right. So chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals, viruses, uh, root canals in your teeth can be an issue. Root canals, uh, actually, teeth are correlated to the organs. So the front yeah. te two teeth are the kidney, bladder, prostate teeth, the eye teeth are the liver teeth. Uh, Frequently, you can see a, a root canal and a molar tooth in a person who has breast cancer, because mm. there's connections there. Wow. So we want to look, so cleanse and fortify um, your body is all about, what we talked about liver, kidney, lymph drainage, what people can do, the formulas that help liver, kidney, lymph drainage, finding out the uh, uh, key toxin, pesticides, heavy metals, like we just talked about, 
uh, viruses are huge. Right. Uh, a lot of people can't clear this coronavirus uh, of frequency even after they've had it, even though they don't feel uh, fluish. And so, uh, and then identifying these key organs. Now, for the liver, you can just talk to somebody. Uh, for the, finding out the first four letters in liver live. Liver affects the eyes. Liver affects headaches. Liver time is one to three in the morning in Chinese medicine. So when the liver is agitated, you wake up a lot between one and three. But the liver is the general of the body. So when the wow, liver is off energetically, that. you can't make decisions. Uh, the liver is associated with anger and irritability. So a lot of people, uh, women who have PMS, I say, do you go towards anxiety and fear or anger and irritability? And they go anger and irritability. You know it's the liver because it actually throws in a, a, a branch to the ovaries and acupuncture. Wow. So, I mean, there's a lot that you can do, can hear about a swollen tongue, bloating, you know, there's a pancreas, small intestine issue. Uh, so you can, by talking to a person, you can kind of get an idea where these sluggish organs are. And then the beauty of the technology that, you know, that I use is, is to find out, okay, what works for you? Not what I think works for you, but we're gonna test your body and find out what vitamin, mineral, herb, homeopathic, what blood pressure medicine, right, what, I, what antibiotic? I understand that you actually put, like you have hundreds of things that you put in the right. individual's hands. I love this concept of the juice, by the way, like, cause I always ask, is the juice worth the squeeze, right? Like what is the person's juice? What's motivating them? What's making them happy? So as a child, I read this article that talked about people that were fundamentally happier, did three things. They rolled in each little win, like a dog, they called rolling in it. Um, so small things, they'd go and roll in it for an hour or two hours. Um, a belief in a higher power that, that um, there is some order or mechanism or program or, um, and that they always saw the silver lining. So even in difficult situations, they knew that the difficult situation had a silver lining and that led to a much more grateful mindset. Um, but back to the, back to Western medicine for a second here. Um, I had mentioned earlier that I just ran my Randox um, Discovery Health Check and it does 80 blood tests, uh, 100 plus biomarkers, but 80 blood tests, including apolipoproteins and, and, and liver markers. And I got a glimpse into my health and I'm like if, you know, in episode one, I showed a picture of my bod and I'm ripped and, and I thought I was healthy, but the insight that I saw from the Randox discovery test, which was only $395, $395. Great deal. Uh, was incredible because it actually motivated me to look at my liver, um, which seems to be, you know, in the pancreas, seems to be something very central to your practice. How much would it cost for someone to run 80 blood tests here in the USA? If they had no insurance? Yeah. Probably about $4,000. You're kidding. The labs would charge four grand. Probably. And so this you're getting this for one tenth of the cost. Oh, and it, and the report came out super organized as, as you and I discussed. I'm going to share it with you. I'll send it to you. Um, I actually made a lot of changes right after that report and I'm going to redo it. Um, but I've lost like probably 10 pounds or so. So yeah. So the third point in the book is to optimize your nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think most people really do well with no dairy, no gluten. Uh, most people do well with uh, lots of vegetables. Because basically we want to reduce acidity in the body. We have to have proteins, but proteins are acidic. So the key is, if you're going to have a steak, make sure it's organic. Uh, but don't have it with rice, have it with vegetables. Lots of leafy greens. Yeah, greens, alkaline. Uh, you know, as a culture, we've become acidic from lifestyle. Too much coffee, sugar, cigarettes, alcohol, soft drinks, and stress. And not enough fruits, vegetables, water, exercise, and fun. So the vegetables are the key thing. You know, people say, well, I drink alkaline water. Well, you know, it just doesn't do it. First of all, your stomach is acidic, and so it becomes less alkaline as soon as it hits your stomach. You really need the vegetables. Uh, lemon is a unique food in that it's acidic on the outside, but becomes alkaline within the body. No other fruit is like that. Wow. So you're, you're at a restaurant, always squeeze the lemon into your water. People need probiotics. People need digestive enzymes a lot because the pancreas time is in the morning. 
-hmm. Pancreas strongest in the morning, weakest at night. Most Americans eat small breakfasts and have huge dinners when their pancreas isn't as strong as it should. So taking a pancreatic enzyme in somebody who, for whatever social reason, has to eat late makes a lot of sense. You don't want to go to bed with a full pancreas stomach. Pancreas function is twofold. Uh, produces digestive enzymes, so just the protein, the starch, and the uh, fat in the food. Okay. But also makes insulin, which is probably one of those tests that you had called yeah. hemoglobin A1C. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of digestion, we're talking about the pancreas that makes the digestive enzymes, which is most of the pancreas that makes those enzymes. So, and the, on a deeper level, the pancreas is connected to self-love, right? People wow. eat sweets when they don't feel sweet about themselves. Uh, on the deeper levels, uh, the breast is motherly love, and the heart is love of mankind. And you know that diabetics have an increased incidence of heart disease. So there's a connection of self-love to love of mankind, and also uh, self-love to motherly love on the breast. So the pancreas is a, the guy who invented this technology was uh, Dr. Schimmel. Uh, he was a German dentist and MD, and he was convinced that the pancreas was this key organ. Uh, I would I'd add the liver. These two things go right. hand in hand. And again, you're always treating the pancreas and the liver and the intestines. It's a, like a triangle. Uh, so, uh, so nutrition is about eating organic, eating alkaline, avoiding dairy, avoiding uh, gluten, because there's a sensitivity to gluten that isn't always picked up on a blood test, which is a true allergy to gluten. Most people have the sensitivity. Yeah. The fourth area is, uh, is how do you energize your body? You know, exercise, obviously, is a key thing. Yoga. Yoga, yeah, high interval intensity training. Uh, you gotta do some resistance training, you should also do stability training, because even if you have thinning of the bones and osteoporosis, if you don't fall, you won't break your bone. Right. So stability exercises, are, so stability, resistance, aerobic, and high interval intensity. EMS okay? Is the EMS the technology where, I mean, I, I feel like it's kind of goes back to Chinese medicine where they put an electrode and they stimulate electrically. If you, I haven't done that, but people seem to love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So you're not opposed to it? Not at all. Okay. So exercise, deep breathing is pretty important. The holotropic breathing, there's all sorts of ways that you can say breathe in and out 25 times on the last breath, completely exhale, and then hold your breath. Right. And you'll find that if you do this three times a day, 25 quick, 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 exhale and hold for uh, as long as you can, you'll be holding for longer periods of time, which is hypoxic stimulation of your Hypoxic. energy factors called the mitochondria. I've been doing the Wim Hof, breathing and just absolutely changes how my body like i feel my organs actually moving because you're breathing in so deep but i want to carry on with your energy flow and hormonal happiness five and six as well in terms of energy flow uh you gotta sleep well yeah sleep right and we all know that people should meditate i mean you know if you walk down the street it, Everybody out there is uh, having a conversation with themselves, yeah. whoever they are. Yeah. They're in the car, they're walking down the street. So the talk. They're the center of their own universe. The self-talk is, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's destructive, but it's, it's not in their best interest. So I think that's where meditation comes in is to stop the chatter. Well, and this is what we discussed earlier. I have spent a lifetime in meditation and I've discovered a hack to being able to meditate quickly which is to listen, to simply listen as acutely as possible. And then I realized as well that there was a second layer to that. When you become habitualized to listening, you can start to make it, you can passively listen. I started to then listen deeper into the sound. So if I'm listening to the air conditioning, I'm now trying to differentiate between different tones in that sound, which gets me deeper into the meditative state. And there's absolutely now self-talk. Right? That's the key is to limit the self-talk. So again, avoiding EMFs, which is not easier, easier said than done. Yeah. Uh, probably not going to uh, bed with your cell phone. Fire your pillow. Yeah. Uh, you really have your cell phone in the other room. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. Have it, have it away. And uh, so the, those are the things. And also, uh, you know, very effective to give there's so much, so many things we can do to put energy into the body. 
uh, but frequently people dissipate that energy by the way they think. And so that's, that's not an easy thing to can Happy water, the happy water experiment. Happy with Emoto. Yeah, stunning revelation um, that a lot of schools are embracing to help people understand that your words and the intentions behind your words have a physical manifestation, not only in your body, but in the body of others. Yeah, the words that you use to describe your experience become your experience. I, I suggest that everyone look up the happy water experiment, the water experiment. Do yeah, Dr. Yamoto. And the last, uh, oh, so let's talk about what I do in my office, because that's about how do we do, you know, so the patient comes in, Yes. we do heart rate variability, we'll talk about that at some point. We do bioimpedance, we talk, we do the history, kind of get a good idea about where to go. We start the process of uh, drainage with the formulas. And we then go into other rooms. We have PEMF, pulsed electromagnetic fields, which are frequencies that increase blood flow. We have, so the, the machine out of Germany basically uh, has programs for all the different organs, adrenals, thyroid, uh, liver, uh, mind body programs, five element acupuncture programs. Uh, we have a light machine, a red light with infrared lasers that's uh, uh, delivering light as energy into the body. We can shine the light on the right ear. The ear is a reflex area for the whole body, so it's kind of a quick acupuncture treating with light to the wow. ear. We have a sound music bed called the Vibrasound, uh, which is a water bed uh, with woofers underneath and there's lights and headphones. So you see, hear, and feel the music, which is one of the more healing oh my instruments in my office. People have had amazing experiences. We've had that for like 30 years. Uh, we have Sonics vibrational therapy that has a magnetic field. Uh, we do intravenous vitamins, intravenous minerals. We do ozone. Do you have an air as well? Are you thinking about the future? Like if you're as, are you gonna pass this knowledge down? Because it might take time to do that. Yeah, I hear this all the time. So I have doctors that come in, they go, wow, this is really great. Uh, and then they leave, they don't come back. So that hasn't happened yet, uh, but we'll see. You know, uh, the last part of the, the chapter, uh, the sixth point is hormonal happiness. You've got major hormones and minor hormones. The major hormones are insulin by the pancreas, thyroid, and adrenal. You can't live without those. The minors are estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. You, you can live without them, but if you optimize them in certain age groups, uh, people can have huge benefits. So you can, uh, you, your practice helps you optimize testosterone? Yeah, we take blood tests and want to see where they are. And then women around the age of 50, very important for estrogen and progesterone because it prevents bone loss. And estrogen keeps the brain sharp. Uh, two thirds of women with Alzheimer's disease, uh, two thirds of Alzheimer's disease are women. Wow. And so there is a point to be said about starting estrogen around menopause, helping them sleep better, helping get rid of those symptoms, and uh, also preventing bone loss. But the adrenals are the key. I find the adrenals are they're like the car, uh, the gas pedal in your car. If the adrenals are tired, and they're the first organ affected by right. stress, mental, emotional, nutritional, environmental, electromagnetic, physical hurt at the gym or surgery, or infectious. So what I see is everybody either has one stressor occurring for a long time or several stresses occurring at the same time, eventually the adrenals get tired. Yeah. Your ability to handle stress goes down, so yeah. stress is no longer a challenge, becomes a threat. You overreact to little things, what I do that for. And if you, sometimes you wake up in the morning and your brain is having conversation with your adrenals and your brain says, look, I got a lot on my plate today and I had you adrenals to secrete hormones to get me through the day. Channel says, I'm tapped out, I got nothing to give you. You're gonna yeah. get anxious because you don't have the resources to deal with the demands of the day. So frequently anxiety, even though it comes out of here, is really coming out of here. So adrenals are, a fa what organ is the adrenals? Well, the adrenals are glands that sit on top of the kidneys. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's connected to the lymphatic system. Well, no, the adrenals secrete hormones uh, that allow us to respond to inflammation yeah, and stress. Okay. Uh, and so basically we live in a society where, I don't like to use that word stress, but you know, people use stressed out to explain just about everything, but the adrenals are suboptimally functioning. And you can't see that on an 8 a.m. blood test. Uh, <laughs> you really need to do a saliva test every four hours to trace the adrenal activity. Because normally it's highest in the morning and it dips as the day goes by. And so, 
And vitamin C, by the way, is the key vitamin for the adrenals. Really? And intravenous vitamin C is probably the best way to boost them quickly. Okay. Uh, so what I see is if you did nothing but treated the liver and the adrenals, you'd have a very happy... Yeah, because our society has an epidemic of anxiety, and that is adrenals. Right. The ability right, to, to deal not with stress. deal with anything. Right? Yeah. The stress is no longer a challenge. Everything's a threat up. And that connects back to, as, we, as you mentioned, self-love, love for mankind. Pancreas self-love, right? The, the organism seems to be, the collective organism seems in the USA, maybe not so much in Europe, seems to be off. Right, right. There's very little love and a whole lot of stress. Right. We haven't talked about love, but as you would agree that love is the key thing that really drives us. 100%. We're going to wrap up with two questions. Have you found the meaning of life? Uh, <laughs> A simple question. <laughs> the meaning of life. Well, you know, personally, I would say that uh, for me, uh, to be of service, in no order, to be of service, to be happy, uh, to express love, and to continue to find out more about myself. Brilliant. Uh, in those Tolstoy, the, the final journey is to, to be of service. And I have a question for you as it relates to artificial intelligence. Do you see a future where AI is treating wellness? Or do you still, is your future one-to-one -one health practitioner and patient? I think it'll be one-to-one. -one. Uh, I see it as one-to-one. -one. I think AI can make great strides in medicine in terms of its ability to interpret scans. Uh, you know, radiologists can miss things very easily. Uh, its ability to, to get all sorts of medical information. I mean, people are moving all over the place now. You know, they've had this work up here, they've had this work up here, they've had this work up here. The doctor can get all that and AI can go through it and just say, well, this is the key thing. Uh, this will save the doctor a lot of time because doctors spend a lot of time just trying to look at all the lab reports. Uh, will AI start treating patients? I don't know. You know, I, I, I really don't. Maybe a collective database for now where, where all doctors can access the collective data and maybe some of the FDA drugs that we're using for one use case may have multiple use cases. I'd like to see AI uh, in the space of uh, energy medicine. Uh, you know, looking at tongues, Chinese medicine, right? Tongues, pulses, 100%. Uh, heart rate variability, bioimpedance. Uh, and I'd like to see a database that's, you know, that's connected to energy medicine. I think that would be fascinating. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So a database where every doctor can access the collective knowledge regarding energy medicine. Right, you could have, right. You could have, like we talked about, the liver being the general the liver causing headaches, the liver controlling the eyes, uh, the liver affecting sleep. And you could throw those symptoms into that database. Then you could have the heart rate variability look at the autonomic nervous system and have that result into the database. You could have the bioimpedance that looks at body fat, body water, minerals, phase angle, throw that into the database. And then you could throw acupuncture uh, uh, analysis in terms of pulses and tongue throw that into the database, and you would have a pretty good composite. We should call it the Gallitzer database. I think this could be, uh, I mean, I, We've just why not, We've why just not do something that? something here, yeah. Yeah, yeah but we could actually, you could do that, and you could help a lot of practitioners, because, you know, I had to say, there's a saying in medicine that if you're not up on it, you're down on it. Uh, but if these doctors who could get that information about their patient, uh, who had filled out a questionnaire and who had done some of these tests, uh, I think they'd have an, you know, you know, they'd go, wow. Yeah, so that could be really interesting uh, in terms of really like expanding all of medicine's awareness of that, because it's not either or, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's both. And you see that with, again, with cancer patients, you know, uh, I tell cancer patients, the tug of war, the energy of the cancer versus the energy of the body, you got 50 trillion cells in your body, and if you see uh, a cancer on an X-ray, there's that's one billion cells. So you got 50,000 billion cells. There's one billion cells, and you know traditional medicine wants to win the tug of war by killing the bad guys. Yeah, 
well, why not keep the good guys strong 100%. while you kill the bad guys? So I think that, that kind of energy medicine AI analysis can be very helpful to all sorts of traditional mind. Well, and also those 50 trillion cells are controlled fundamentally here. So the stronger and the more focused this is, the greater the signal to the body and the greater the control over the ecosystem. Well, they are controlled here, but again, there's 50 trillion of them. So not all the impulses- <laughs> They don't listen. Not all the, right, not all the impulses get to the 50 trillion, yeah. the 50 trillion. And more importantly, the hormonal system can't get to it. Yeah. The adrenals, thyroid, they can't get to all those. Yeah. So the cells talk to each other. And that is really the new frontier. The new frontier is how do you get the cells yes. to communicate to each other that yes. all is well and that the community is just yes. fine. Harmoniously. Right. So as to prevent, say, cancer cells that basically say, no, we don't really like it here. We're going to yeah. do our own thing yeah. uh, from leaving the community. You know, I mean, if you thought about it, cancer cells are primitive. Uh, if you how, how to liken cancer cells to a part of society, you liken it to homeless people. Homeless people are not educated, a little primitive, live off the system, have nowhere to go. Well, do you shoot the homeless people or poison them? No. Uh, you'd like to educate them and transform them. Yes. So the real next frontier is. Uh, can you transform cancers? And that goes back to love. Absolutely. Love. You go, you transfer love into the cell that is displaced. Right. Get, get the cells stronger. Get the cells stronger. More energy, less toxic. Independent. Get rid of the senescent cells and have it maybe move the other way. You and I have to keep talking because I could honestly spend an hour in each one of these topics. May I, besides figuring out the Gallitzer database, right, of energy medicine, where all doctors can access this information that you've accumulated, because I do think that it would be absolutely a shame for this knowledge um, not to be transmitted and to be utilized. What you are doing is so common sense intelligence, which as we know, common sense intelligence is usually the highest level of intelligence. Um, just taking care of the holistic approach to the emotional, hormonal, and physical health of the, of the organism is sensible rather than treating the symptom, masking a symptom with drugs or pharmacopoeia. Um, so I'd love to invite you to come back again. Sure. And we'll go, we'll do deeper dives into each subject. I'm so fascinated. I'm so privileged to have had this time with you today. It's great to meet you yeah, too. Lovely yeah. to meet you. And I, I'd love to come into your practice. And before we go, if you don't mind just sharing with our audience how they can get a hold of you. The office phone number 310-820. 6042 and the website might be the easiest way drgallitzer.com lovely to be with you today genuinely my pleasure and i look forward to seeing you again dr gallitzer thank you, thank you. Thank you very right. much